problems are different than pain. So if you see like a, like a coin, it's kind of, the, it's not the same thing. So there's problems and what's behind it are pains. Problems are just indicators. Pain are money makers, pain are cash. What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Thinking Project. Today, I had the honor of interviewing JK Molina, who is a, a Twitter superstar. Uh, has a couple hundred thousand followers on Twitter, has a big uh, mastermind group. He is a serial entrepreneur. Go learn more about him on Twitter. But JK Molina reached out and I was floored, really enjoyed the opportunity to interview him. So in this, we learn a lot how to monetize your social media, uh, specifically Twitter, but this could work with any other social media platform that you are building an audience on. Um, and not only how to build an audience, but how, or excuse me, how to monetize and build an audience, but how to monetize even with a small audience, which is something that is going to become increasingly more significant as we move through 2023. So with all that being said, make sure that you follow, you like the video, uh, you share it with your friends, you leave a review, all that good stuff. The podcast isn't sponsored, but if you want to support it, share this with your friends, leave a review, all that good stuff. And if you're in sales, uh, join the mastermind group. I uh, Empathetic Selling Solutions is the group that I've made to br make you happier in business, to make you want to wake up in the morning and attack the day in your small business instead of dreading it. That's my plan. That's my goal. Welcome JK Molina and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, JK, we're rolling. Thanks for being here, sir. Because we're having me. Absolutely. Dude, so let's just start with this. Uh -huh. Almost 178,000 followers on Twitter. You got a lot of heavy hitters following you too. Um, so my first question, just to get right into the weeds, is like how do people, I mean, you've obviously done an amazing job monetizing social media, and that's going to be a big deal. Everybody wants to try to do it. So tell us like your kind of story and how you started monetizing your Twitter and how people can like just start monetizing maybe social media in general. Some people don't do Twitter. I don't know, but like you tell us your experience and, and what the best way for people to start doing that is. Now, I appreciate you having me here, man. Um, just right off the bat to everybody listening, we're going to cover most of it on Twitter because that's my expertise. If the concepts bleed to other social media, well, that's awesome. And, and I think they will, but right off the bat, like, I haven't monetized my tech talk or Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm mostly a Twitter guy. So just that disclaimer out there. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> let's say you want to monetize, right? Now, there's a few things you have to do before you even think about how you monetize. I always think of it as a first who, then it's kind of what, and then it's how, right? So first is who are we talking to? Because there's like a huge difference between like it's all the difference in the world i used to think offer creation was king now i kind of think market picking is king like you got to go for the right people i know this guy that uh his name's tyler and what he used to do he used to show people how to get out of debt by exploiting credit card points and if you can imagine <laughs> dalton people who are very in debt Nothing against them, but it's uh, they can't afford that high prices, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he was like, okay, um, what do I pivot? And I asked him, like, what are his skill? And he said he's really good at exploiting credit card points. So I was thinking, dude, how about we just go to people who are spending five figures a day on Facebook ads, right? And we tailor it to them who are already spending credit cards. Or it's the difference between me, like showing people how to grow with their accounts and monetize to people who already have a following, who already made some money, and then showing them how to monetize. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the success you have on business outbound predicates on what market you pick. Okay, so it kind of begins in that. And you begin picking the right market by knowing, what am I good at? Like it's, it starts with like, what are you good at? And then you ask the question, from the people who can afford this, who can afford it the most, you know, mm. and you like who can pay you the most money. And after you find it, you kind of tailor it to them. And that's kind of a, a big misconception people have, I feel. And that was a misconception I had for like two years, man. Like if you just go with a big account, then people will follow you and, and, and make money, right? You, you'll just make money. And 
that's kind of how not how it happens <laughs> you know right. like yeah. you you get to a thousand followers and it's like okay just a little bit more right and then you get to ten thousand followers and it's oh, just a little bit more and then you get to a hundred thousand followers oh just a little bit more and it, it, it never happens that way like um <clears throat> you need to pick a market first then you craft an offer and then you kind of sell that with your big account uh but i'm glad to like go deep into any one of those that you like yeah i love that well and it's you know for a lot of people out there it's like marketing you know picking the right market um and it's just interesting because in your journey like i know you started off as a ghostwriter so it, that to me is like just a crazy um you know industry in general right so but I, but I'd love to hear your story because I feel, I feel like people would kind of resonate with that. Cause if you're a ghostwriter, right, there's so many angles that you can take with that. As far as, you know, what you were talking about as, as whether or not you're going to like, um, go for, you know, this market or that market, like what helped you decide, uh, what market you were going to go into? Like, uh, you know, I heard you tell the story about, you know, one of your very first clients, I think it was right when somebody told you to offer 2000 and, and you, you're you going to do 750 and then you ended up saying 700, right? Like what were your prices going to be? And like, how did you kind of like create, uh, you know, find that market and then go start creating like an offer basically? Yeah. So what I liked and what really got me into like kind of this path, I started as a, as a dating guru, dude. Like that's how I started. Okay. I showed people how to, how to get dates. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't that good at it myself, right? So why the <laughs> fuck was I teaching it? Right. But anyway, you you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. But I I saw, yeah. I saw this tweet by this guy, he, he Lawrence King on Twitter, and he mentioned that Gillette, you know, the Razor account, they had like hundred and thirty thousand followers, and if you check them right now, they got like three likes per post. It's like horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and wow. at the moment I was making like two hundred fifty dollars uh, a month as a VA, right? And essentially, Lauren said, "Dude, this guy is getting paid eighty thousand dollars a year. Imagine how much they would pay you if you didn't suck at your job." <laughs> like, oh, that makes <laughs> wow, sense. Wow, dude, that, right? that's, like, that's rough, yeah, too. Dude. You're like, wow, man. It's like, dude. I mean, you ha you had one hundred thirty thousand followers. Come on, you can't get more than three likes on a post. Like you That's got right. this, right? Like you, right. you, you can do this. Anyway, guy couldn't. And then it occurred to me, like, man, like there's so many people on Twitter like making good, good money. And they could make more money if they just tweeted, right? Like big CEOs, big founders. And I always joke about this. It's the guy with like nine profile. It's it, I always joke about this. It's the guy with like nine followers and like a mountain profile pick or a no profile pick. That guy's a centime millionaire, right? Like it's yeah. it, it's always the randomest dude. I remember I, I met one guy. He had 1,000 followers, right? And he DM'd me. I'm like, oh, who's this guy? Because the profile picture was like horrible quality. Mm -hmm. And I check his profile and, and like he is legit nine figure amazon zeller I'm like what the fuck like he's Whoa. got like no followers right nobody knows who he is and the more i look into it like the more people i find like that so wow. like kind of like when i saw lawrence's tweet kind of the the pieces started connecting and i thought man, hey, maybe maybe there's a lot of people who would pay for me to manage their accounts right so that's yeah. what i did i started to hit up founders and hitting up ceos and hitting up like this big heavy hitters, which by the way, have more followers than me. So why the fuck yeah. would I go right for them, right? Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I I still <laughs> message them and um <laughs> just just kind of like took the leap, right? Kind of said, like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. And uh I got I got lucky in that in that aspect. It was like the 15th guy I DM'd. That guy was like, you know what? It's worth a shot. Let's get him a call. We got him a mm -hmm. call. I want to charge him 750 bucks. I choke. I charge him 700. Guy still said yes. And after that, like kind of just, I tripled my income in a call, right? So I was like, whoa, like, what's going on? <laughs> we can whoa. we can make this happen. So I just started doing it over and over again. Wow, man. That's insane. I love that though. I'm a sales, I'm a sales guy. That's what, that's what I do. That's what I've always done. 
And so one of the things that really stuck out in that story that you told that I personally like loved was, you know, you just started tweeting, even though you didn't feel like maybe, you know, if, if this isn't the right word, this is the one that's coming to me right now, but like, maybe you didn't feel like you deserve to be reaching out to them. Right. Cause they had more followers than you. They were making whatever. Um, but it's that, you know, whatever happens happens. I'm just going to do it. Right. Cause like, what's the, the worst that happens is they never DM me back. So why not try? And I feel like if more people had that kind of attitude, I feel like they could get a lot further in life. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I get that a lot. It's to, like, I don't want to ruin my reputation. I'm like, which one? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. yes. And, and then that kind of, that kind of makes them see it as it is. Like, who was I? It, like, it's not to say like, I'm this big shot or whatever, but at, at that time, like if it didn't go right, so what? You yeah. know, like, it's not like your life is going to get ruined. Now, like right before this, I did have a call with this guy who had this W2 job and like their, <clears throat> their boss didn't like it and stuff. Well, that, that's a separate case. And if that's the case, then you do have to play differently. You do have to get better at OPSEC. But a lot of my audience, it's people like me in their 20s just hustling, seeing how they can make money. Worst case yeah. scenario, what happens? You go back to your parents. <laughs> right and then still you have food you have shelter you got you got you got your stuff right yeah. and yeah like can i if, if we wanted to tie it back to a little bit of, of the story like i was born and raised in guatemala right like it's not like the richest country ever and i wasn't too like i wasn't like i wasn't poor right but uh I, I, a lot of people say like it, it was kind of a disadvantage that i grew in my country and I can see their point, but I can also think like it's it's a big advantage. One time when I was a mm -hmm. kid, not not a kid, but kind of a teenager, you know, I don't know who told me this dumb kid. I was <laughs> somebody told me that if you just went to like this uh like this community service things, that you, you could you can meet a lot of girls. I was like, I'm in, right? <laughs> so I go there, right? <laughs> to this kind of villages in the middle of nowhere, and we're gonna like implement um like this wooden, not wooden, but stone stoves and uh, like solar panels where they could get, uh, you know, they could get light, right? Because mm -hmm. there's not much in Guatemala, but if there's anything, it's sunlight, right? So might as well take advantage of it. Yeah. So we went there and I remember it was like late at night and not, not late at night, it was like late evening. So it was like six, right? And we're starting implementing like all these like light bulbs. And I was sick of it, dude, because I was tired. I was dirty. I was like sweaty and it was super hot. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Because it was in the middle of nowhere, right? like 11 hours away, deep in a mountain, right? Like deep, deep. So what's what's like funny about that place or interesting about that place, it, it kind of looks like a bowl, right? It's like a huge bowl of like mountains, right? And we're kind mm -hmm. of in, in the edge of a bowl, right? And we started implementing all these things. And I was tired because we were at it for like hours, right? And then I remember I was complaining about how tired I was, you know, on my smartphone. And then <laughs> I remember this kid, he saw the light bulb. Uh, and it was like, you know, electric light. They usually have like stoves and fire. And the kid was like, hey, like, mom, we're rich. We're rich. Mom, we're rich. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, I feel like such a bitch. Like you're complaining on my phone, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the kids oh. just like almost crying of happiness. And I felt like like this small, like this small. Right? Mm. And then we started climbing and, and shit. We got to like the edge of the bowl for, with the mountains. And I remember uh, sun, like, you know, it was night. And then as like the night started to take over that that town didn't have any electric lights but i remember how like i could see as the night set all the lights were starting to turn on you know for the wow. first time on the bowl of <clears throat> darkness right and i was like oh, man like i got so much and i got so mm. much to appreciate this people live in like a dollar a day or something so ever since wow. then like kind of my money perspective kind of shifted as in like whatever happens you really don't need that much cash to live so wow. like your stress tolerance goes up right <clears throat> whoever wins is the one that 
you know, plays the best. Yeah. But you can also win by being willing to lose the most or by having nothing to lose. Yeah. Right. So when you play the game that way and you realize whatever happens, you know, I got light, I got a floor, I got water. So I'll be Mm -hmm. fine. So, I mean, when I see it that way, dude, is sending 25 DMs a day really an issue? Just get the fuck out of here. So I just did it. And eventually, (laughs) another one. Well, you know what's so crazy? I love that story because it's very, it's so counterintuitive to the, like the, maybe like the hustle culture narrative, which is like, um, everybody's goal is to, you know, wh- when they tell you to start like on your money journey, they, they make you, you know, they, they focus on like all the stuff, right. Put a picture of a Rolex on your phone, put a picture of the house you want on your computer, whatever, right. Focus on all these things. But I like your approach is like, no, if this all fails, like you actually, we actually don't need that much. And I, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful perspective to take. And probably why, you're so successful right now is because like you realize like I've got, I'm going to go, if I, if I don't make it, I'm going to go back and do the same thing. And I was happy and I'm happy doing either one. And I feel like, um, well, let me just ask you, is that kind of how you feel? Like you'd be happy doing either one uh, or has it, has you, have you grown or I actually wanted to a- ask you like, which one does, which one works for you? Are you more of the Rolex kind of guy or are you more of the right. whatever happens, happens kind of guy? I'm, I'm more of the whatever happens, happens kind of guy. I think, um, like I, I wrote this little, you know, this little short on like the 10 laws of selling and the first rule in my book, the first law of selling in my book is don't skip the lemonade stand because for me, that's where it all starts, which is like, you know, little kids on the side of the road, they're selling lemonade that they made in the hot sun. It's like <laughs> not cold. The cups are dirty, right? Like the lemonade doesn't taste the best and they're charging like $2 and or, or like $3 for a cup and you give them a 20, right? Like for me, that's so, so I'm, I'm part of like this mindset of like, if we can do that, like if people can make money doing lemonade stands, or if you just remember, like, that's what we're doing. Like the point is like to hustle and to give it your best and to show people who you are, um, that I think you'll get further. Right. I mean, the, the stuff is nice, but right. Like everybody would love a Rolex. Maybe some people wouldn't, but for me, it's, it's, it goes back to like the little stuff and like, just remembering like where you came from and, and, because that's, I grew up in a poor town and in, in the United States, um, but everybody was happy. And so I'm like, yeah, we, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel a similar, you know, thread that you do. Yeah. When people go like <clears throat> to tie it to a little bit to, well, what if my lemonade isn't the best? So it like doesn't <laughs> entitle me to sell. Right. And yeah. I get it because that happens. I, I used to feel that way because even though you, like you're deeply passionate about what you do and you have like the purest intentions in mind, sometimes you fuck up the service and it's not that good. <laughs> right? That happens, right? Like it, it just happens, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, <clears throat> I used to feel like like garbage every time. And I mean, not to say I sh- should f- feel a little ashamed that my service wasn't the best. And mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like the other day I ran a, a like this challenge, this three day challenge where we're going to craft offers. And I thought that the biggest concern was going to be, Hey, JK, I don't have an offer. (laughs) Right. But the biggest concern was actually, I have an offer. I'm not confident selling it. And I I wouldn't have known that. Right. I I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. And it was actually pretty cool because we, the conclusion we got to is that even though you may not have the best offer in place, you may not have the best skill set in place. You can have the best intentions in you. So you can put yourself in a situation where you're like, whatever happens, I mean, I can still give you your money back or I can still keep working until we get this desired result because I may not have an A plus skill set, but I'll do whatever the fuck it takes to make you happy because you're my first mm-hmm. client and it'll make you happy. You know, mm-hmm. I, oh, this, my, my most popular tweet ever, which basically I stole from somebody because I copied <laughs> the, a video link and I reposted it. <clears throat> it was this kid. I remember, man, like this, these two kids, they were like, I don't know, like eight or nine. And they were knocking on doors because they wanted to, uh, to shovel snow because they wanted to make a little bit of money. Okay. And I remember they were like super nervous. I'm like, oh man, like, would they say yes? Will they say no? The, the woman says yes. And they're like over the moon, super excited because she paid them 10 bucks. And then the kids just go crazy and they just go, you know what? Let me do a really good job because they paid first. 
they're not the best snow shovelers ever, but their intentions were pure. And if your intentions are pure, it's going to show. And because it shows, people take shots on you. And they're like, you know what? Let me believe in this guy. And then you can make it happen. Whatever happens, if you don't deliver the entire service or it's not as good, give them their money back, right? Mm -hmm. What you're losing money, you gain in experience. And then you mm -hmm. do it again. Then you do it again. And eventually, you're going to reach a point where you're competent enough. And when you're mm -hmm. competent enough, that's already way ahead of other people. Because the service you're like scared to charge money for, there's people charging twice for a service half as good. You just don't see it yeah. because you're so deep into the trenches. Well, I, that's so funny that you mentioned that because I, I was, I, I mean, I'm kind of just getting out of that, but it was funny because I was um, kind of in that when I started my sales group, like I have a little sales training group and I still feel like that some days when I'm like, I've been in sales for over a decade. I've cashed a bunch of commission checks. I've done a bunch of stuff, like sold a lot of things. Um, and so I made this group and and still think like, man, you know, there's these guys who've, who've been doing it longer or like, you know, they have the flashy stuff. And so people really buy into that and I don't. Right. Um, and so why, why would somebody buy it from me from versus them? Right. Uh, do you ever have those? Like when you, when you see somebody who's just like, you probably seen this, right. They're just, you see their offer and you're like, that's really good. You see them, they got all the experience, but then you just look at them and they're like, dude, this guy couldn't sell it to anybody because he's just not confident. Right. Like how do you approach like a, somebody like that? Like, how do you get them in the right mindset? Like how would somebody like me maybe get into the right mindset? That's such fuck. That's, you know how some people, sometimes people go like, Hey, that's a good question as a filler. Yeah. No, that's actually a fucking good question because like, <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to, I kind of want to work it out with you, but um, yeah, it goes back for me. It goes back to a Naval quote and I don't really get that because of that quote so in mm -hmm. a way i made it mathematically impossible for me to feel imposter syndrome and i'm gonna explain it to you why because naval has a quote that says be, st be the best in the world at what you do keep really finding that until it's true so mm -hmm. like you and me we're never going to be the best at sales right we're never <laughs> going to be the best at b2b sales but at least the pool is smaller at least the sea is smaller. And then you can go to from a sea to a lake, to a pond, to a puddle. And you go eventually to a pond that or a puddle that it's so small that that is the place where you're the best at. And you're confident delivering that result because nobody's better at that puddle because there's literally <laughs> nobody else, right? So yeah, it's mathematically yeah, yeah. impossible to fuck it up. <laughs> so in my scenario, it's, what is the one thing, however small, that you can promise a confident result at? And you can mm -hmm. work backwards from that. Like, can you teach somebody how to breathe? Probably. Can you teach somebody <laughs> how to eat and drink water? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you yeah. keep working towards that until you reach a level where you're like, okay, I'm I'm competent, you know, at this. Right. And then you go a little bit. And then you go a little bit. Alex Ramosi yeah. talks a lot about this. Like you become Actually, let me talk about, <clears throat> about jiu-jitsu because I really like this. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a white belt. I'm not really <laughs> like people. We, I usually get fucked up at the gym, right? Because I'm a Heck white yeah. belt. But That's all right. there's this really cool quote I really like by John Danaher. John Danaher is one of the top jiu-jitsu coaches in history. And he said, I, he, they asked him on a podcast, hey, John, how do you instill confidence in your players? And he said, for me... 99% of confidence is physical because you have proof of what you've done. You know you can beat the guy because you've already beat yourself and other guys at your gym. So I don't believe in rituals. I don't believe in mindset hacks. I believe in evidence. Evidence mm. that you've already done it and you're confident that you can fuck somebody up. Mm. Right? So how do I build confidence in my players? I make them gather evidence that they're good at what they do. And then eventually you don't need to convince yourself that you're good because it's already a fact. You don't need to convince mm. blue that it's blue. You don't need to convince white that it's white. It just <sighs> is. So at some point you become confident enough, confident enough that you can deliver. And yeah. it's, it just goes through the reps and the reps and the reps. Yeah, I love that. And that kind of puts a different perspective on why like social proof would be a big thing, right? Because if you want to have confidence and and maybe that's what it is right like social proof and things like that are, are more for you 
than anybody else. It's like, yeah, I'm actually helping people. Like I'm actually doing good things. Like I know I can do oh, this. Yeah. Because yeah, man, I mean, and unfortunately, <clears throat> you know, for a lot of people, it's like the the cons sometimes overshadow the pros. But if I like I like what you said, I think that's a perfect answer. Like when you get so many pros that the cons don't really matter. Like it doesn't, you know what I mean? You can just keep going because it doesn't. Yeah, it's matter. like no one really sees it. Yeah, like do you need to convince yourself that you're good at eating? No, you just are <laughs> because you've eaten right. thousands of times in your life, right? It's like, <laughs> can you convince yourself you're good at breathing? No, because you've done it. Can you convince yeah. yourself you're good at sales? Like you've done it. Yeah. Right. So I there. it's funny because I, I go to my my coaching program on the Slack on the Wins channel. Like people feel like the clients, especially, they think that it serves on two purposes. One is to make themselves feel good because obviously it's a win. You should feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Second is to make me use it as a uh, marketing material because it's social proof, but there's like a third component to every win. And it's to me, like the mental tease that I get is like, <laughs> oh, my shit works. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's so true, man. I love that. And uh, you got that, you got that too from your Wiz channel. It's like, oh, okay, we're good. Yeah. Well, you know, what's funny is like, I have a discord for my Slack group. I don't, I don't even have a wins channel. I'm going to put that in my discord group right after we get done with this, bro. So I didn't even think yeah, about bro, it. I don't, gotta, I don't know why I didn't even think of it. I think about that and having a financial wins channel. And I thought about this yesterday a non-financial wins channel. Hey guys, mm. I'm feeling good. I lost some weight. I beat somebody at the gym. Grandma's happy with me, whatever. Right. So you can whatever, yeah. kind of build that community. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think why I never did it, just a funny side note is because like in sales, I've been in a lot of startups where they have that, they think like the wins channel is like the, their culture King. And so I was always like, ah, dude, we don't need to put wins in here. Like we just go home, just go to sales, do your job. Right. But now I under like, yeah, yeah. This conversation is enlightening. That's why I love doing podcasts, man. Hey, switching only gears only a little bit though. Your podcast, how long have you been doing that? Like, what was the, what was the spark for starting that? Uh, I liked Twitter a lot because of the network effects, but I thought Twitter was like really king at social media. And now I kind of think YouTube is <laughs> taking yeah. that place because you re we record, I don't know, you, you've seen this. You, yeah. you get videos recommended from four years ago, dude. Right. Like, wow. Like, this is so good. And uh, yeah. it built so much trust, the communities YouTube built, like, and this is just a very long winded way of saying, I want to make more money. So I'm just yeah. recording more podcasts. Why so, not? To have it up. Really, why not? Yeah, I, think I mean, why not? I saw somebody post, um, I think it was Sean Cannell. He's got a really big YouTube channel, but I saw him post that Adobe just put out a report that people watch like 19 hours of video. I think maybe a day or maybe a week. I don't know. I can't remember, but YouTube is, uh, and, and from your perspective, cause you, you've obviously crushed it on Twitter. Do you think like, what, what do you think are the main platforms people should be on? Like Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, like where, and, and I, and obviously it's like where you want to be, right? Like, are you more video? Are you more written? Right. Who, who's your audience? But for you, like what trends are you seeing in, in the business community on socials? The one you can stick to. Like honestly, like That's the one it, where you huh? have the best unfair advantage because <laughs> you, you cannot that. lose if you keep going at it. Dude, I remember I went to yeah. a training gym. I went, I went, let me say that again. Yeah. I remember I went to the dojo, right? So I went to train in jujitsu. And every time after every role, I was a bike belt. And I would ask the people who I rolled with blue and purple belts, hey, do you have any advice for me? And all of them said the same. They didn't even coordinate between themselves. Everybody said the same every single day. They said, yeah, just, just keep showing up, man. I'm like, no, but like, <laughs> do you have any advice on, you know, how to submit people? And they're like, no, yeah. <laughs> just keep yeah. showing up. Right, yeah. And it's it's the boring things, man. It's, it's a consistency. <laughs> and I, I don't want to like add to the noise and say that, if you do it again, if you do it again, eventually you'll get there. But honestly, we kind of all know already what to yeah. do. Yeah. You want to lose weight, just eat less and train more, right? Yeah. You want to make yeah, more money, doing it. craft an offer, call more people. 
You want to get a girlfriend, <laughs> you know, become a high value dude, talk to more girls. Like it's yeah. actually quite simple, right? What we want is actually very simple, but we feel like we, we need somebody else to tell it to us. Uh-huh. And we think that there's something else. We always <laughs> think that there's something else and yeah. it's really not. It's really not. That's why. And may, tell me if you feel that way with coaching. Do you ever feel like, because you have your sales community, right? And you help others uh-huh. do it. So do you ever feel like, man, I don't know why that advice worked. It was kind of basic. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, yeah, I, I actually yeah. just had this yesterday where, where I was working with a lady who um, was like, this person keeps ghosting me. Like I can't get them on the phone. And I was like, all right, well, here's what you're going to do. I was like, it's really simple. You're just going to put how I, have I offended you in the subject line? And then just be like, Hey, I know life changes in the blink of an eye. And by the way, if you want to join our group, it's five grand and then put a period and hit send. And they, and I promise they'll respond. And it's and it, because it's like, that's sales one-on-one. You just, if you, you can talk yourself out of a deal. So less is more. And she came back on the call and she was like, wow, as soon as I hit send, it didn't take 30 seconds. These, she, these people had been ghosting her for like months. And in 30 seconds, they, they hit a respond and they, and then we were back in the conversation. And she's like, I can't believe it. That's like magic. And I'm like, but it's, you know, for me though, like it's not though. It's actually the easiest thing, you know, it was one email, but for her, it was like, wow. thousand percent. Yeah. 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 And, and that's kind of why imposter syndrome creeps in on me a little bit is because, and, and I actually heard a story about this. Um, I have a really good friend of mine, fellow podcaster here in, in Utah who uh, his day job is, is heavy duty, like heavy equipment operator on construction sites. And he's like the most humble guy. Cause he's like, Oh, anybody could, he, yeah, this is what he said. He goes, anybody could uh, operate this 10,000 pound backhoe and, and man do this. And I'm like, no, but they can't dude. And he, and anyway, <laughs> he had an experience where that was shown to him. And now he's like, really confident, you know, it's just like what we were saying about the evidence, right? Cause somebody tried to hop in who could never do it. And almost, you know, kill the guy or whatever. And uh, he's like, Oh yeah, maybe this is, maybe I, this is actually something that I'm good at. Right. That like not a lot of people can do. And I think just seeing that too, seeing even like, you know, novice salespeople for me, take a, take a really tiny piece of advice and it changes their whole game and like gives them a lot of confidence, even though it's sm- small for us. Right. I'd love to talk about your sales process because selling a $2,000 service or $3,000 service, like can be really intimidating for some people, even if you are like, I know I'm a badass at sales, but can you ask somebody for 10 grand? Cause that's, that's a level, you know, there's levels to this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. My sales process. I, um, I actually do a lot of sales by chat and I, um, like I do sales by chat for myself. I have a few virtual assistants that do it for like for my account and whatnot. But my sales by chat process is tailored for people who already have a certain amount of followers. I just mm-hmm. I just like to work with those people most because it's mm-hmm. like, if you have no followers, I kind of need to show you how to play the entire game of golf. If you have a bunch of followers, you kind of only need to learn how to put to like make an astronomical difference in your game. It's like Ooh, a few changes and it's like, boom, you're at 10K a month. A few changes mm-hmm. and boom, you're at 30K a month. Like it doesn't take much. So I will say this is tailored to them. And what I like to do Interesting. I like is that. I always, yeah, I, I like to just post as much content as you can, but the content needs to be related to you. That's why I told everybody, everybody in the community, if you post a platitude, you lose your right to complain about not making money. I don't want to see <laughs> any platitudes in this fucking group because it doesn't relate to you. Like when was the last time you saw somebody post 10 books that'll 10 extra productivity. And you're like, yeah. man, I got to buy from that guy. Like for yeah, real, never. bro. Like yeah, this no, guy never. gets never. And it doesn't happen. But yeah. anyway, it got, it's got to relate to. And what I like to do is just post a shit ton of content. And then you see the people who comment, retweet, like, or follow you. So right there, you got like four different oceans where the fish you want might be. Right. And they're big oceans. So you go over them. And then you go looking at the qualifier and you're like, right click, open a new tab, right click and open a new tab. After a few minutes, you're going to have like a bunch of people you could talk to. And that's the people who you DM. Now, how mm-hmm. you start the conversation might be different. The people I like, I usually, if they have already been 
on the same industry that a few of my clients have been, I just send them a testimonial. Hey, we got this person, this result, but it would be relevant to work together. Let me know. Right. Yeah. Let them talk. It's a great pitch. If they're not, I usually just start with like a, like a cool conversation starter. Like, a, Hey, really cool. Hey, I saw this. Yo. Awesome. Yeah. Like just, just get them to respond. Like right. that's it. That's it. That's the toughest message. Just get them to respond. Yes. After that, you kind of want to uncover the, the problems. Like what are, what are the issues they have? <laughs> And usually the issues will be very broad and they'll say not enough leads. I'm not getting traction. I need more exposure. Now those are the problems and problems are different than pain. So if you see like a, like a coin, it's kind of, the, it's not the same thing. So there's problems and what's behind it are pains. Problems are just indicators. Pain are money makers, pain are cash. So mm -hmm, yeah. you figure out, why are they not making, why, why do they need exposure? What do they want that? And maybe mm. they bought retweets and somebody disappointed them in the past. Or yeah. maybe uh, they're embarrassed because they have a big account and they're not making money. Maybe mm -hmm. they put a lot of work into working with an agency. They put a lot of money in there and the agency disappointed them. So you always want to find out the problems and then the pain behind the problem because the mm. pain is what makes money. Yeah. And uh, after that, you kind of, well, after you uncover the pain, you kind of isolate it and you go with, okay, like there's a bunch of things you mentioned. What is it like the one thing, right? And you want to figure out the one thing because if you try to convince people of many things, it decreases your effectiveness. You need to isolate the pain. So I try to isolate it and find what is it that they want. After yeah. we get that, that's when I propose a call. We get on a call <clears throat> and, um, after that, it's kind of the same process. Just make them uncover it. Try to make them see it. Yeah. And after they see the <clears throat> issue, that's when you you ask for the money, really. And uh, a lot of new ones on it, right? Every case is different. But this is kind yeah. of the general sales process I use. No, I like it, though, because that's, I mean, that's the sales process is like figuring out what's going on, like really uncovering it. And then, and then that's what you sell. A lot of salespeople that in my experience try to follow like this rote, like I call it like a spray and pray or like feature dumping. Like we've all heard that. Right. Um, but you know, that's like super old school. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, stuff doesn't yeah. work anymore. Stuff like this works, right. Really personalized digging on each person. That's why sales training is so hard, right? Because it is so nuanced. Like there are literally a million things that could happen. Um, but, but also like, but once you have like this idea, this knowledge of like uncovering this problem, figuring out why it's a pain, you know, solving that, relieving that it's actually not <clears throat> anymore. Right. <clears throat> because now you yeah. have a, now you have like a, a process and, um, things start to like, you start to see patterns even with different people in different industries. And then you start to find out, <clears throat> Sorry. And then you start to find out, you know, one of my favorite quotes is uh, everybody's, you know, you're special and unique, just like everyone else. Right. <laughs> and you start to know like, Hey, we can actually replicate this a ton and, and start going after that. I think that's, I think that's stellar. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you like growing on Twitter, YouTube, and obviously it's buzzing in the news right now, but like we hear a lot about AI chat GPT specifically. How do you feel like that, that uh, helps, or hinders or, you know, what are your thoughts on that in the future of maybe ghostwriting or monetizing on, on t Twitter, YouTube, things like that? Yeah, I have no clue on that. Like, okay. I always try to, um, I, uh, <laughs> I wish I had a better answer because this is shitty. Yeah. <laughs> but I, in one, in one side, I got me thinking, because I made this a mistake of focusing on too much. On 2021 crypto, you know, like oh, everything yeah. was going up. I was like, oh, let, let me learn crypto, right? 2022 yeah. TikTok is like, oh, let me learn tick. And yeah, I don't want it to like happen again and distract me from the main thing, which is my business. So mm. that that's one. On the other side, I don't want to be the guy that's like, you ever <laughs> seen that um that ad from like the 20th century of some yeah. dude that's saying, Oh, the internet is just a fad, it'll pass. Like, I don't want to be that guy either. Yeah, right? no, yeah, no one wants to be that guy for sure. Yeah. So, like, I'm kind of torn. But 
<clears throat> for me, one thing that will never run out of fashion is skills, sales, marketing, copywriting, being good at mm -hmm. that. So yeah, like I've I was like very honest with myself, knowing that at my age, where I am today, I'm not in the money stacking phase. I'm in the skill stacking phase. I need to get good at shit. Yeah. So if I get good at things, then I don't really need to fear AI mm -hmm. because I'm good at things, right? Yeah. And I don't think that in my lifetime, maybe I this might be one of those. Yeah. Things where I just go, I, I may go to history as, as having the yeah. worst take ever, right? <laughs> but it might happen. But I don't think in my lifestyle, I'm going to have to worry at it or worry uh -huh. about it. And I mean, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it. I think this is more for the next generation, but for me. Yeah, I think I so. I mean, I mean, when I look at AI, because <clears throat> I, I mean, AI for sales, like what does that look like? Um, there's a lot of things you know, cause I get asked that question about AI for selling and things like that. And really what, and, and so what I know about AI, the very little that I know about AI is it's really about the inputs. Like it, um, every piece of technology up to this point, and maybe AI shifts, but for me, AI is still about inputs. Like you can go to chat GPT or so like Jasper, like some of these AI copywriting things. And if you put shit in, you're going to get shit out. So even if you're like, if you don't know copywriting, Jasper AI chat GPT won't help you because you don't know, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like you don't know the basics. And so like, what's funny is, um, you know, I, I asked you that question to, you know, but, but for me, like I answer people like, dude, if you don't know like sales, right? Like if you don't know what questions to ask, you're not going to get the answers you want. And, uh, so that's kind of how I, I view AI is like, you still got to know stuff because, um, you're gonna look real dumb if you try to give somebody <laughs> a thing, a thing that AI wrote, and you have no clue what it's even talking about, right? Because eventually somebody's gonna check you, and you're not gonna know anything, and that's when it's gonna get kind of gnarly, right? It, at least now in the AI world, if you don't know, if you don't know the basics of ghostwriting, copywriting, getting clients, sales, yeah, it's not gonna help you do anything, right? Like <laughs> you don't know what's good and what's Although not. I kinda I kind of got scared, man. Not not scared, but I was like, whoa. When I saw yeah, the like chat GPT, like, like, hey, write me like three paragraphs selling this supplement. And it wrote mm -hmm. with like, like not it was good and stuff. I was like, whoa. Okay. Well, and that's <laughs> what's see, going on. But see, that's my point is like, you're a professional. So when you see good stuff, you're like, wow, that's good. But if I don't know anything, how do I know? Like, you know what I mean? Because I've put some stuff into chat GPT, some of the AI stuff and I get it back and I'm like, mm, no, that's not it. Right. Like it's good, but that's not it. Like, that's not what, you know what I mean? That's not what people are looking for. That's not what this is looking for. If you were, you know, like levels again, right. Like, um, but I agree with you though. I, I have done some things in chat GPT where I'm like, oh shit, this is ridiculous. Like I, I I'll tell you so one thing, man, like go ahead, in, go ahead. in, in a in a year, we'll know if we were visionaries or just have the dumbest fucking takes. Like we'll know in a year. <laughs> we'll know. And I'm cool. And I'm cool either way. By the way, if I have a dumb take or not, but uh, AI yeah, is crazy. It's fine. Um, no. Oh, cool. Okay. Cool. We'll we'll shift we'll shift from that because um, I really enjoyed like uh, you know kind of going over what really matters, and that's why I liked your podcast, um, like Saint Cash, because people do tend to focus on the wrong things in business. So how do you help people? Maybe this is part of your sales process or maybe this is part of your coaching process, but like taking people from focusing on one thing to focusing on another thing, like, Oh, well, I already have all these followers. Um, I don't know why I'm not making money. Well, dude, you got the wrong followers, but how do you help people realize that or, or whatever problem it might be? Yeah, it's, it comes from, it's, it's like 0.001% at a time. It's belief yeah. through repetition, right? So I, yeah. I, somebody once told me, JK, I feel like every single one of your tweets says like saying cash in a different way. I'm like, yeah. That's it though. That's the point. That's what I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying to do. Yeah. Because <laughs> eventually you start like, I don't choose when I get you to believe, but what I can do is I can give you a little bit chipping away at certain limiting beliefs that you have but the biggest one and that's why i like to work with big accounts mostly 
mm-hmm. you realize it yourself like you see it yourself it's mm-hmm. for me what like the big aha moment was when i had 70,000 followers and i was making like 30k a month and then i met this dude with 900 followers making 30k a month like wow. what the fuck or like mm-hmm. what's going on right and for a lot of people i see that same experience they see their competition with so little followers and then they go through that pain of saying like, oh, fuck, I'm fucking it up, right? It's kind mm-hmm. of that heartbreak. You, you don't learn how to not fall in love with every single girl you'll see until one fucks you up. So this is a big <laughs> one. That's why I like, to, I like to work with people who already had that epiphany. Uh, but for the Ooh, people who haven't, and it happens, every single one of my tweets says the same thing a thousand different ways. And eventually I try to brainwash you into realizing that you need to make money yeah <laughs> i love that too that's so awesome because it's it, and like very needed like i don't know i mean you've probably seen some of the stuff but uh you know tons of layoffs like i'm in salt lake city where there's a like a big tech scene and then you have like some of the really big tech companies and they're like uh laying people off and so i i was really excited to do this interview just to get like some insight on like how people can start to like start their own thing even if they do it in the background like i think we're just past the age like i feel like we're close in age um that like we're, we're past the time of like you have one job for 40 years like you need like a you know if you feel like you need a job but you also need a side gig like i have a nine to five sales job that i love but i have like two other side hustles that will never go away because i've been laid off before i've gotten a can before right? Even when you're doing everything right, like somebody can come into the sales room and just fire everybody or say like, Hey, we can't afford you anymore. Or like, Hey, whatever, right. You're out. And, uh, and it's just wild, man. So I, I I really enjoy like talking about how people can like really take ownership and like take their life back and not feel like they have to rely on other people to, to make money. Yeah. And it's not that complex, really just learn a skill and send a hundred DMs a day. (laughs) Right. You'll be fine. And it's, I mean, yeah. It's, you'll be which, fine. Is, which, which is crazy because when people are like, when people are in my course and they're like, Hey, how do I get better at sales? <clears throat> or oh, actually do let me, sales. Let, yeah, exactly. Do sales. Or like even this, like somebody will be like, Hey, I only got three sales this month. I don't know what's going on. The first question I ask is, well, how many people have you talked to? They're like, well, like five or six. And I'm like, there you go. You haven't talked to enough people to sell 15, bro. You need to, you need to hit up a hundred people. <laughs> yeah like and yeah sometimes the best thing like we can do as coaches or gurus right is to remind them of the things that they already know yeah that's true like i I remember i paid one guy 6k to coach me and dude i just need to get more sales i couldn't get any more sales and he coached me at 6k dude and after the end of the 6k program he just said one sentence he was like you know jk i've assessed everything you sent me and I've arrived to the conclusion that you need more leads. I'm like, dude, get the fuck out of here. Come on. Like I paid 6K for this. Really? Like, he's like, yeah, <laughs> that's all you need. And I started getting leads and guess what happened? My business grew. <laughs> so it's, it's just like, wow, like, dude. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. Thanks. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all that you needed. Just kind of the things that are already in you. You already yeah. know what to do. You just kind of are waiting for permission yeah to do it but you don't need it you can just do it i know dude i that it's so awesome well hey i really appreciate you joining me before i let you go tell me about tell everybody where they can find you where they can follow you tell about tweet hunter i know you got that as your SaaS uh product going on right now so let everybody know i appreciate it so you guys can follow me on twitter i'm mostly active on twitter and youtube at one jk molina that's o-n-e jk molina if you want to learn about audience building i'm not your guy But if you want to learn about audience monetization, I'll see you there. (laughs) Sick, man. I love it. All right. Thank you so much, boss. Talk soon.